All right, what's happening, everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing well, and welcome to today's video, which is about Frank Lampard's first official Premier League uh, pre-match press conference. But before we do get into the video, I'd like to request that you lot do subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell notifications icon because I upload every day. All right, so it's an exciting one. Manchester United, Old Trafford. I mean, Frank Lampard's first proper press conference, like Premier League one, was always going to be exciting. But obviously, it's a top tier, high profile fixture. So it was exciting. Now, double exciting or certainly interesting, intriguing, because of the whole David Luiz stuff. And yes, he was asked about the David Luiz transfer and got into it. So today, I'm gonna to be picking up on a load of the talking points from the press conference, uh, sort of giving you a gist of what he said and then giving my thoughts on it. He does talk about the David Luiz transfer to Arsenal. He talks about the youngsters, the Kalamata Nadoi's um, contract situation. He talks about his expectations, especially his comparisons with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer as well. He talks about a load of stuff and I've got my notes and I'm gonna go through in a linear fashion uh, and let you know. So there's a few generic early questions about how do you think preseason's going and this, that and the other. And Frank says, yes, he is very, very happy with how preseason went. He saw a lot of positives. But preseason's over now, and now we need to deliver. He was jovial and stuff when he first went into the press conference, but straight away he gets into sort of Frank Lampard killer mode. The kind of Frank Lampard we saw on the football pitch. It did not take long for a journalist to highlight how Frank Lampard is the youngest manager in the Premier League and how he feels about that. He pretty much brushed away the question saying he understands he's young, he understands he's inexperienced as well to a degree but he doesn't feel that matters for him. He's ready to go and he's ready to deliver for Chelsea Football Club. When posed the question of would he take the same result as last time he visited Old Trafford as a manager, he sort of laughed and was like, yeah, maybe we did draw last time, uh, but then talked about how at, you know, now with Chelsea and Ole and in United, it's a very different situation and it will be a very different game. Should Lampard come away from Old Trafford with, you know, a draw or a win, he still would be undefeated at Old Trafford with two different clubs in his managerial career. And it did not take very long for the David Luiz questions to come out and he had obviously prepared for this instance. He started by saying, me and David have been having conversations over the last week. Honest conversations, because they know each other incredibly well. Conversations that led to the conclusion that he was to go. Lampard says he doesn't have ones, twos or threes in his mind when it comes to the lineup. And you know what? He did say as soon as he arrived at Chelsea, his unveiling, the first press conference, he says he's not going to give anyone a free pass. It's not like perhaps other coaches where it will give the senior figures a guaranteed time or guaranteed minutes is look I'm bringing in some kids from loan I'm bringing in some teenagers they've got the same chance as all of you and that includes people like David Luiz um, obviously Chelsea have got very young exciting centre backs and Lampard sort of said to David Luiz you know everyone gets a chance I'm not going to give you any special treatment this situation can be sort of looked at in two ways you could be like well you know, Louise has won a lot, he wants guaranteed minutes, but there's also the perspective of he's got a sense of entitlement here. Frank wants to play with an energetic high press and a high line. Um, players like Zuma, Rudiger, Tomori, they will have an excellent recovery speed. David Luiz doesn't. He doesn't necessarily fit the mould of Frank Lampard's centre-backs. And although Frank would probably be prepared to give him minutes in rotation, even if he wasn't performing as well as the other young centre-backs, it, it wasn't enough for David Luiz. When it comes to the fallout question, was there an argument, um, Frank Lampard sort of brushed this away, as you'd expect he would. He said, no, loads of exchanges, honest conversations. Remember, they do know each other incredibly well. In my opinion, there was probably likely a bust up, but there always is on the training pitch. But they had an exchange where they said, right, well, you are obviously not going to be happy with this being a meritocracy, because that's how Frank wants to play a meritocracy. Louise wanted, like, demands, I guess. He said, if you're not happy with that, you can go. And he's like, okay, I want to go to Arsenal. And rather than keeping him around and, you know, creating perhaps a toxic atmosphere, Frank was pretty much, like, fine. He did stress David Louise did not go on the strike. And he only trained alone because Lampard made the decision that it was for the best after they came to that decision. Because he obviously, well, they both decided, right, this isn't going to work. Fine, go to Arsenal. But I don't want you to train with the team because I don't think it's going to be healthy. So there was no going on strike, him training alone as a punishment. It was like a, 
you know, this is for the best. Ultimately, probably for Chelsea, this is actually a good thing. They've got four really good young centre-backs that are probably in a better mould for Frank Lampard's football and they'll certainly be you know, happy that they'll get more of a chance. Now, the only downside from a Chelsea perspective is David Luiz does strengthen Arsenal. I mean, you look at the rest of their centre-backs, you know, at least even if David Luiz is not the most sensible defensively, he's got a lot of quality and it makes him stronger, but David Luiz has been a great servant to uh, Chelsea over the years. He's going on 33 years old. He doesn't fit the mould of the current manager and he can have a bit of an attitude problem. But, you know, let him go, and if he wants to go to Arsenal, let him go to Arsenal. He's going to play there for, like, one or two seasons, Max. And, you know, I think it does suit all parties. It's just a shame from a Chelsea perspective, it also suits uh, the London rival. So, Frank Lampard was asked about youngster Callum Hudson-Odoi, and they wanted an update on the contract situation. This is kind of a bit of same-same. Frank reiterated, no, there's no update yet, but Callum is a very, very important player. We want him here, the club wants him here, the players want him here, he's very, very important. Um, Callum recently does look happy in training. He's posting pictures of him in the new Chelsea kit. And bowl accounts, I feel like maybe he's waiting to see how Frank plays him, but I think he's near full fitness. So, you know, I, I think it's likely he will sign the extension, but there's a feel-good factor around the club, and that includes a feel-good feeling from Callum Hudson-Odoi. So, a journo asked Lampard about his targets, what he believes a realistic finish and target for this season. Frank Lampard's obviously very impressive the way he talks, and he's a smart guy, so he didn't give anything away, and he'd be silly to you know, say sick for four or something like that. He just said like a generic response in the sense of there's City and Liverpool, clearly they're far away from everyone else. Our intentions to close that gap and finish in the best place we can. He talks about how Chelsea always want to play Champions League football, but he doesn't want to sit here in the press conference and say, oh yeah, our target is fourth, we're going for fourth. I think Frank Lampard's ambitions uh, don't have a ceiling. Remember, he's Chelsea through and through, and Chelsea for the last 15, 20 years have been all about winning. Winning of the title, being at the top, not settling for second best, and that's bred into Frank Lampard's mind. Super Frankie Lampard was then asked about Sunday's game. Is it bigger for you, Frank, or is it bigger for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? He explained how he's not sure there's similarities to both the situations. It's going to be a huge game for both Frank and Ole, but he talks about how... Oli's got, you know, a bit more time behind him. He's got a transfer window and perhaps this is the time for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to really prove his worth. Later on in the press conference, actually, he talks about how when Oli had came in, he had such a good response from the players and Man United had a really good run of form, but then it all fell off a cliff and he was judged um, harshly in the media, rightly or wrongly. Lampard comes into the sort of managerial union union and says like oh you know i think it's harsh to critique him uh, he only just came in he inherited this of course it all went well but you know th there's going to be a rough patch he should be judged now this is for me a little bit of mind games maybe inherited from Mourinho. he says he should be judged now he's had half a season he's had his pre-season he's had his transfer window judge him now which is maybe putting on a little bit of pressure onto Solskjaer, but he's kind of, in that statement, he's kind of absolving himself a little bit of pressure and putting it onto Solskjaer. All right, so Frank Lampard is then asked about the Chelsea youngsters, the academy lads that are in the squad, and they say, look, we've uh, seen them in pre-season play for you. Have you seen enough for them to feature this year? And a quick, concise, assertive, yes, comes from Frank Lampard. He says he has the full intention of including all of these youngsters. Tammy Abraham, you know, Hudson Adore, he mentions Tamori, Reese James, and he mentions Pulisic. He says, We know Pulisic's a big, you know, a big signing, but he's a young lad, he's just a similar age. But he intends on using all the youth and sees a lot of talent in them and he believes in them. Pretty refreshing from a Chelsea coach, right? He does go on to say he does not want to put too much pressure on their shoulders, but he really does believe in all these youngsters. Another question is posed to the Chelsea manager talking about how absolutely everyone, whether it's fans or the media, are writing Chelsea off this season. He says, how, how does that make you feel? Do you almost like how no, you know, no one thinks you're going to do well? He, he laughs and says, yes, he loves it. He loves the fact how no one's putting Chelsea in the top six, how a lot of people are writing him off, writing the club off. He says that's exactly what drives him on and you know that gives him the desire and passion to do well and you know what I can believe it because 
This is how Frank Lampard has lived in his footballing career. A lot of people said no, they put him down, you know, whether when he was a kid at West Ham or when he made the move to Chelsea. People doubted him and that's exactly what made him such a success. And you know what, if this is going to, you know, be transcribed to his managerial career and he's getting that same feeling, Hopefully that means great things for Frank Lampard and Chelsea Football Club. The next question was a great one, I liked it. They talked about, has he prepared his dressing room speech for Old Trafford? He gave a little smile and said no. He said he's got so much to prepare for, he's doing so much work in, in terms of uh, match preparation. And he then goes on to kind of talk about how he's very much a guy who works on emotion. Now this probably comes from being a player and a captain and such a great player. He says, he won't write down speeches before, he'll generally know the kind of vibe he wants to assert to his players, but he can, he can sense, he's got the em empathetic senses, he'll know what he needs to say at the time. He says he'll get the vibe in the dressing room and he'll pick them up and make them believe in themselves and fight for each other, fight for the collective and fight for the individual, I believe he said. Some great words from the uh, Chelsea coach there, you know, really inspirational and to be honest, I think that's much better for a coach to come in, pick up the vibe, and then perhaps say some profound words in the moment rather than reeling out a sort of speech, you know. Next up, he was asked about team news. He didn't mention Ruben Loftus-Cheek, but obviously he's still out. He does mention Kante and Rudiger, and he talks about how they're both fit, which is really interesting because I thought Rudiger was behind Kante, but he talks about them both being fit, whether he'll include them in the, on the game on Sunday, he's not sure. I have a sneaking suspicion he'll start Kante, probably not Rudiger, I can see Zuma and Christensen starting. And he does go on to say Willian and Rudy, the, the United game probably does come too soon for them. Uh, Willian's obviously arrived late when he rejoined the squad and hasn't had enough time to integrate. Finally, Frank is asked about how it feels, the eve of the Premier League, this press conference, being Chelsea manager. And you know, he had that twinkle in his eye. But he said the surreal moment's over. His, you know, his feet's under the desk, he knows what the office is like. Everyone knows what it means to him to be at Chelsea. He talks about being a Chelsea man, that's his club, it means everything to him. But the surrealness is gone. He's at the job now, he's Chelsea manager, and that's all he's focusing on, and he's gonna do his best. Everyone knows how I feel about Chelsea. End quote. Lovely stuff there. So that's it guys, all pretty positive stuff, right? I mean, Frank Lampard always speaks incredibly well in press conferences. He did it at Derby, I was so impressed with how he spoke as Derby manager. And of course, he's doing it again at Chelsea, but this time he's got that little twinkle in his eye, which is lovely to see. What do you think guys, do you enjoy the video? Please get down in the comments, let me know your thoughts on the press conference, whether you've watched it or not, or whether you're just reacting to what I'm saying in this video. Please do like the video to support my content, and why not subscribe if you've not yet subscribed. And remember, you can gain access to exclusive Q&A videos where I answer your questions via video on Patreon. It costs $1 a month and I can answer your questions about football in Chelsea. Also follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Twitter and Instagram. And that's it from me guys. You enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby